Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. This is your host, Ryan Kennedy. And today's episode, I'm gonna be diving in to 10 of the most important factors when it comes to dialing in your health, your quality of life, your performance, and just different lifestyle practices and different variables that will really determine how you feel, your health span, and a number of other factors that are really are important to our day-to-day lives. So I'm gonna be kind of going through a high-level list today, and over the next many episodes, I'm gonna be taking a much deeper dive into each of these topics and you know, providing a lot more practical, actionable advice when it comes to each of these variables, but today I just wanted to do almost like a 30,000 foot view of like what does a healthy lifestyle look like? And I think this is gonna be really helpful and really important for people to wrap their head around different areas. And as I'm going through this list of 10 things, I really want you to think about where you could use improvement. Which of these 10 are you slacking in? Where are you really strong? You know, where are you really looking to double down? That's gonna be super, super helpful. So number one on the list, and I wanna preface this by saying, this list is in no particular order. So it's not like ordered from most important to least important, they're all important. So no particular order. Number one though I do have is sleep. Getting enough good quality sleep on a nightly basis is one of the most foundational elements to how we really operate, to our biology, to our mental health, to so many factors. If you're not sleeping well, it doesn't matter how perfect your exercise program is, how great your nutrition is, how many supplements you're taking, none of that really matters if you're not getting enough high quality sleep. So the research really shows we need between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. And most folks are not getting even close to that. And a lot of people are going through their day to day sleep deprived and you know having to reach for extra coffee and stimulants and really just a lot of ways to mask their fatigue because they're not getting adequate rest. So again, I'm gonna cover really specific and actionable topic, uh, action, actionable things that you can do in a later uh, episode dedicated to sleep. But what it really comes down to is doing your best to get to bed early, trying to align your sleep schedule with the sunrise so that you can get outside first thing in the morning, get that sunlight directly into your eyes to set the circadian rhythm and really start to hone in on that biological clock and gaining consistency and making sure you have a good evening routine practice to wind down and relax and decompress. Those are all gonna be incredibly critical factors that go such a long way as you start to really improve your sleep quality and then just making it a priority, You know, not going out late drinking or whatever else people might do late at night. I vote, you know, I'm more of an early bird. So you know, it's, you'll be hard pressed to find me uh, not asleep after 10 p.m. Uh, probably 99% of the time. But I do understand some folks have trouble winding down and turning off their brain. And so again, I'm going to do a, a complete podcast on evening routines and really kind of go towards some of my foundational practices. But number one on the on the list of 10 things is getting enough good quality sleep on a, on a daily or rather nightly basis. Number two on our list is to minimize stress in your life and really adopt stress management practices and techniques because stress is gonna be inevitable. You know, we all have mental, emotional stress and I'm not talking about physical stress as much, uh, which I'm gonna discuss later on in this list. I'm talking about chronic mental stress from, oh man, I got this deadline at work or I'm running late or I have all these things to do and I'm feeling overwhelmed and stressed out and you know all these different ways that we really build up our mental uh, and emotional stress load. And most of us don't really have tools in our, in our toolbox to really help to combat that stress because life is gonna throw variables at us. That's a given. That's something that's inevitable. So we really have to do our best to implement practices such as meditation, breath work, journaling, uh, doing some exercise, which is an incredible way to relieve uh, mental emotional stress is to do things that are actually physical hormetic stressors like exercise or sauna or cold exposure, getting out in the sun, getting grounded by digging our, getting our bare feet out on the earth. All these things go such a long way. So really stress being one of the number one Uh, contributing causes to virtually every chronic disease and problem that we face when it comes to deterioration of our health, it's really important that you do your best to minimize your stress inputs and maximize your stress reduction techniques and practices that you incorporate. Um, Going into number three, we have to dial in your nutrition. 
Eat nourishing foods that work well with your body and avoid harmful foods. Now I want you to pay close attention to this because the next episode, dropping right after this one, I'm gonna be talking about the 10 universal laws to healthy eating. And so that's gonna really give everyone some foundational framework on how to really dial in their nutrition. But when it comes to some basic stuff, just sticking to real whole foods, avoiding the processed junk food, the food like you know chemical laden crap that most people are eating these days, and really just eating high quality animal foods, uh, good quality vegetables and fruits and you know plants that work well with your biology. Uh, and, and again, more on this to come, but really just trying to eliminate the junk food, eliminate the sugar, eliminate the excessive starches and the alcohol and all the wrong types of omega-6 uh, unhealthy vegetable oil uh, fats. That's gonna be really foundational here. Number four, we have live in accordance with the laws of nature. Now this is very broad, but what I've found through all my research and also clinic, clinical experience helping others get well is that one of the leading problems that people have is that we're so domesticated that we've gotten out of sync with a lot of the quote unquote laws or just different rhythms of nature that really dictate how we thrive. You know, we've evolved with the sun, we've evolved to really be outside, and yet so many of us in today's day and age spend upwards of 90% of our time inside. You could look up the statistics, it's nuts. Under these artificial junk lights, make, you know, in front of computer screens and television screens, on our phones, and we're not getting out into the environment and the elements that really bring us health and vitality. So by living in accordance with the laws of nature, you really wanna spend as much time as you can outside. You don't have to be in direct sunlight, so obviously you don't wanna get sunburned, more on that to come, but you wanna make sure that you're actually getting your eyes exposed to natural lighting, not the indoor junk light, the fluorescence and LEDs. That's gonna help dial in your circadian rhythm. And we wanna make sure we're getting sensible sun exposure. That means getting sun on your skin with minimal clothing for anywhere from five to 20 minutes. You don't go out for hours on end where you get burnt to a crisp, but you know, doing it for a short period of time, somewhere around solar noon, which is typically around between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., is gonna really help your body to synthesize vitamin D, produce nitric oxide, help with melanin, help with all these different uh, signaling pathways in the body that is so critical. So you gotta get out in the sun, uh, and then just you know, getting your feet on the earth getting the, the grounding benefits where we are absorbing all these electrons from the planet, helping to quell inflammation and helping with so many benefits, breathing fresh air, you know, and all these things that go along with just being immersed in either actual nature in the mountains or at the beach or, you know, in the val in the, in the desert, wherever it might be. We're also just not spending time indoors whenever we have the opportunity. Even if you're working on your computer, if you go work out on your patio, or your balcony, instead of in your living room, you're going to be very well served. Number five, we have exposing yourself to challenging environments. Now this is physical and mental. So really getting out of your comfort zone. You know, we're creatures of comfort. And the more things we do outside of our comfort zone, the better our opportunities are to grow and really adapt. You know, it's this adaptation process. So physical examples of getting into challenging environments would be cold exposure, taking a cold shower or doing a cold plunge. Uh, also hot exposure, hot thermogenesis, such as using the sauna or even doing uh, you know, some time in the hot tub or jacuzzi. These things are hormetic stressors and because of the adaptation that they cause our bodies, it really provides widespread benefits. But I'm also talking about you know, mentally exposing yourself to challenging environments, things like public speaking or social engagements or things that get you outside your comfort zone that really you always feel good after the fact when you do these things, but you always have this hesitation. And being able to push past that not only delivers this, this sense of confidence moving forward and that it carries over in all aspects of your life, but it also is just really beneficial for your personal growth and for your evolution as a, as a human, as a person. So that's number five. Moving on to number six, moving your body throughout the day and really avoiding excess sitting. This is huge. And I actually just recorded an entire podcast on this topic that is gonna be profoundly valuable. So keep an eye out for that. It'll be dropping in the next week or two. Uh, but just this concept of low level physical activity, moving your body and just not sitting on your butt for eight hours or 10 hours a day and just getting up 
doing some, you know, even if it's something as simple as just walking to grab some water and back, walking to the bathroom, walking outside for 30 seconds, then walking back in and getting back on the computer, but breaking up that sedentary time is essential. And then just doing as much walking and movement as you can throughout the day really adds up to so many profound benefits. And then doing some form of beneficial exercise on a regular basis. So I kind of differentiate between movement versus exercise. Exercise being high intensity, being resistance training, high intensity interval training, you know, steady state cardio. And so really going out and doing something you enjoy ideally, you know, of course you can go crush some time on the Stairmaster if that's your jam. But for me personally, and for people I work with, it's so much more sustainable and just overall beneficial when you find forms of exercise you enjoy. Now I love weightlifting and pushing around some heavy objects, doing body weight exercises like pull-ups and push-ups and squats and things of that nature. But I also love mountain biking and surfing and you know getting out on my stand-up paddleboard and all these things that are really light me up and bring more happiness and joy to my life, but also are very beneficial to my health in a lot of capacities. So really urge you to find things like that that you could do, whether it be playing sports, a yoga class, that just helps you get, you know, helps you move your body. That's what it comes down to, folks. Moving on to number seven, we have community. Community is everything. Having amazing, loving relationships and friendships with people who you genu genuinely enjoy being around. It's great to spend time with family, but sometimes family can be a little draining. I'm gonna speak firsthand on this, and I love my family. My brothers, my dad, my extended family. I consider my girlfriend and her family, um, you know, my family as well. Um, but sometimes spending time with family can be a little draining. You know, depending on the relationship you have with a sibling or a parent or, you know, an extended family member. So I also encourage you really to cultivate relationships and community with people who you just love to be around, who light you up, who, who uplift you, who make you a better person, you know, and, and also having it be a two way street. But that's really key. And there's a lot of ways to kind of form this community. Um, obviously, with the era of the Internet and technology, we're able to use that with different apps and different websites and you know, kind of going towards different ways to connect with people, but always in person is going to be ideal. And cultivating friendships with people that aren't going to be draining to your to your energy or are not conducive to your path. If you're looking to excel in your health, your fitness, maybe financially, business wise, in your relationships, but you're hanging around a bunch of friends who are not really going anywhere, who don't have those same aspirations, who are fine working there you know, nine to five job and don't really have any desire to be an entrepreneur or, you know, do, do a bunch of awesome things in the world, they are actually going to deter you on your path. So it's best to actually distance yourself from people that don't see eye to eye with the direction that you want to take your life and really focus on surrounding yourself with people who are going to be very conducive, who are heading in the same direction, who are, you know, going to be supportive of you and also be beneficial in terms of helping you with guidance and feedback and all that sort of thing. Number eight is to really clean up your environment. Clean up your environment. I know this sounds vague at first, but let me elaborate. We are exposed to so many toxic chemicals in our day to day from drinking unfiltered water, you know, tap water to, you know, breathing poor air quality to the personal care products we use on our bodies like deodorant, shampoo, lotion, face wash, all these types of personal care products, they absorb into our skin. They absorb into our bloodstream and cause a lot of harm because a lot of these things are endocrine disrupting chemicals. Again, I'm going to go in this much more depth on the best brands, the best way to avoid these, the best way to detox in future episodes, but really just being mindful of how you surround yourself in your home and really trying to minimize your exposure by drinking filtered water, you know, having access to fresh air, whether it's keeping your windows open or using an air uh, purification system, making sure that you're choosing non-toxic personal care products and household cleaning products, uh, you know, making sure you're buying organic and eating high quality foods. All these things are gonna go such a long way. So really cleaning up your environment and also what goes along with cleaning up your environment is don't have a bunch of clutter everywhere. And I'm terrible with this and I've gotten a lot better in the last couple of years of just being more organized and tidy because all those little things, even though you may not realize it, is creating distractions for your mind. And a lot of times it's subconscious, but having a messy home, a messy workplace, it really creates a lot of chaos and disorganization within your own mind and your own headspace. So really having 
your environments as well when it comes to the layout and everything that goes along with that really in place really really important number nine um, number nine number ten i think are towards the top as far as the highest of importance because they're going to really be a driving force for the number one through eight items on this list so number nine is do something you love and are passionate about on a regular basis now you could find this through your work if you're blessed to be on a path where the work that you do is something that you're passionate about and things that you love i'm very blessed to say that's the case for me but also it could be pastimes maybe you love to read or you love to garden or you love to go swimming or go for a walk on the beach or do you know go hiking in the mountains whatever it is that lights you up that you love that you're passionate about that you that you do this activity and you look forward to it you enjoy it during and then after you just feel amazing do that do that as often as possible ideally daily but if that's not feasible at least a couple times a week you have to really iron out time to make time for these types of activities and, and it just has such a profound impact on your quality of life on your levels of happiness on your overall fulfillment and so i really urge you to do something you love on a regular basis uh, and it could be you know that's the greatest form of self-care folks things that you love and it could be exercise it could be meditation it could also be watching some netflix maybe i'm not a huge proponent of watching a bunch of mindless tv but if it's something you love and something that you're passionate about and it lights you up and makes you feel better i'm not going to tell you not to do it you know that's up to you and there's no wrong there's no wrong thing to do and granted obviously there's you know harmful drugs and you know different substance abuse problems people have but that's not love that's not passion i want to make that clear just because it's giving you a, a quick dopamine boost or it's giving you uh, an escape it's not the same as what i'm talking about here number 10 last item on this list is to dial in your life's mission goal or objective and to take steps to work towards achieving your purpose now this is not easy and it comes in all sorts of flavors and forms but really having that direction, that mission, that passion of something that you're doing outside of yourself, some way of helping others, of giving back, of providing value to the world is what really leaves us feeling full and fulfilled at the end of the day. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter, you know, the accolades or the material possessions. What matters is how you're really showing up to fulfill that mission or goal or objective in your life in order to really have that deeper fulfillment. So I appreciate you tuning into today's episode. Those are the 10 things that I think are just a key, key components, just critical aspects to a healthy lifestyle, to an amazing life in general, you know, and, and is really going to bring you not only more vitality, energy, and better well-being from a physical standpoint, but also bring you mental and emotional and spiritual fulfillment and happiness and, and health in those categories as well. So be sure to tune into the next episode. As usual, it'd mean the world to me if you shared this episode out to people in your life who you believe it could serve. And subscribe, leave a review for the podcast as I get it going again. Your support really means the world to me so I can reach as many people as possible. And so thanks again for listening in and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you found it helpful, please share it along to anyone else you believe it can serve. You can find the show notes and resources we discussed at ryankennedyshow.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave a review for the show. Your feedback helps to support me on my mission to positively impact as many people as possible with this information. Much love, everyone.